Hello and welcome to our webinar, Ownership Growth Planning, Setting Goals That Lead to Success. This is a Food Co-op Initiative webinar and I'm Jacqueline Hanna. So just a little bit about Food Co-op Initiative before we get started today. We are a national nonprofit that only serves startup food co-ops all over the country. We're currently providing support and resources for over 120 communities nationwide, from Sitka, Alaska, over to Boston, Massachusetts, and down into Texas. And we have helped over 122 food co-ops get started in the last 10 years. So we exist to support food co-ops at all stages of development. Give us a call at any time. Our phone number is there on the screen or email us at info at fci.coop. Sign up for our mailing list uh, and take a look at our extensive resources. We have lots of free webinars. Uh, we have the book and guide to how to open a food co-op and much, much more on our website. And all of our support and resources are free to you. We'd like to take a quick moment to thank our sponsors that make these webinars possible. The USDA, uh, National Cooperative Bank, National Cooperative Grocers, the Cooperative Foundation, Cooperative Fund of New England, and dozens of mature food co-ops and individuals all over the U.S. Thank you for making our work possible for, so we can support the future food co-ops of our country. A few quick points of housekeeping before we get started. We are recording, uh, so we're recording this webinar today and it will be available shortly on our Food Co-op Initiative website as well as on our YouTube channel. We have an extensive library of webinars on dozens of topics for startups. Check those out and share what you learned here today with other members of your startup team and give them the link to this webinar and they can watch it as well. If you learned a lot today, make sure you share it. We do want your questions. These sessions are richer when you participate and we'd love to hear your questions. Got questions during the webinar? Then send them to info at fci.coop anytime during this webinar. I'll remind you a few times throughout it. And if you send those in, we're going to address those at the end of the session and I'll make sure we get to as many of them as possible. Okay, so let's jump into our topic today. Ownership growth planning, setting goals that lead to success. So this is kind of an entry level look at how do we decide how many owners we need. You'll probably hear often when well, you need X number of owners to get your store open or X number of owners before you start your member, uh, your member loan or your member preferred shares campaign. We're going to dig into where those numbers come from and how you can adjust them and tweak them and understand them to suit your community's needs. Okay. The number one most important thing throughout today is more owners equal more success. There's no factor more important, maybe a few equally important, but none more important to your startup success than the number of owners that you will have and their level of excitement throughout the project and when you get your doors open. So they, we want them to be excited not only about getting to shop with you, but about the mission, mission and vision of what you do. So that in mind, let's dive into how we set some of those goals. Now another quick reason, I want to go over some of the reasons why not having enough owners can lead to some troubles. What we've seen repeatedly working with the dozens and dozens of startups that we have all over the Lack of ownership growth can cause stalling out, a loss of momentum, increasing ownership base, an exciting sense that something's going on at your co-op uh, can lead to stagnation, a lack of volunteers, and burnout amongst leaders. It can also, very importantly, lead to missed goals. We see a lot of startups have really decent momentum um, and maybe get a site earlier than expected and go for that owner loan or preferred share campaign, maybe uh, with less owners than would have been recommended, and they just don't hit those goals. We're going to go in depth a little more on that. We have to hit our number, or we have to hit our owner goals to be able to raise the money necessary to get our stores open. And the last one is actually uh, connected to one of the reasons we know that when food co-ops do fail, uh, which we know 75% of startups open do not fail, they are successful, but 25% do. And one of the factors can be opening too quick or with too few owners. Low sales can come from not enough owners to, to shop in your store. People who come in who are going to support it from day one but as the word slowly gets out to the rest of the community about what you have to offer. So it's really critical, again and again, this is why you hear us stress that ownership growth matters. Some groups will tell us about all the great stuff they're working on in their updates and, and all the progress they're making. We'll ask, well, how's that ownership growth going? 
and they don't know how many owners they have, and there hasn't been much growth recently. And that's of concern to us for these three reasons. So we want to give you some more tools to think about how to set those goals and why they're important. A quick note before we get started, they, these techniques uh, help you to understand your goals and set well thought out goals that fit your startup co-op, but there isn't a one size all fits spell for success. So for, some, well, for one co-op, a thousand owners at opening might turn out to be perfect and a lot of owners and everything they need to be successful. In another community, that might not be nearly enough owners and we're going to talk about how you can tell the difference. But there isn't just one magical size that works for everyone. So there will be follow-up sessions uh, talking about four key steps to strong ownership growth. We're focusing today on knowing your goal. How do you calculate that goal? What other goals need to be in place for development? Do you understand why you need them and why they're there? We find if you don't understand them, and it makes sense, if you don't personally understand those goals and why they're important, it's hard to do the work of keep pushing for those owners. Um, you know, it's not always easy and you need to know why it's important so the work feels important. After that, um, we're going to do a session later this year on laying out your goal timeline, your ownership goals and when, what they coincide with and when. And then convert it to owner talk, how to show them that ownership growth is important and connect it to exciting milestones that they can participate in. And then planning one year at a time, how to not only take those growth goals and plan events, mini campaigns, new owner benefits to make sure that exciting things are happening that will draw people in and help you reach those ownership goals. Today we're going to focus on knowing your goal. So current best practices in general recommend 1,000 to 1,200 owners at opening, but that is a very one-size-fits-all number. It does fit a lot of startup projects. Um, but there are ways to get much more specific numbers. So you might have heard this number. It's a good number to aim for, but let's dive into how you can look at it more specifically um, based on the needs of your startup. There are two important factors in setting up your ownership goals. Number one, the amount of owner capital your startup needs to raise. Number two, the size of the store or community that you are working in. Now, Goal number one, um, people really enjoy when I show them uh, this technique. Um, it's very, uh, it's mathematical, it's a, it's a formula, uh, but you do have to have some stage two information generally about your co-op, we'll talk about that. But even if you're not at a point that you have the market study or performer, some of the tools necessary uh, to use this technique, learning about it now will be a great way to look forward uh, to why it's important. And then number two is a broader um, one that everyone can use, but we'll dive into both. But let's start with number one, which we'll talk about the method here to building right ownership goals for your co-op is based on the amount of owner capital to be raised. Now to do this, you're going to need an excellent pro forma. Uh, so your pro forma financials, if you don't have them already, these are your in-depth financial pro formas with sources and uses, as well as balance sheets, uh, debt schedule. Um, quite often, most startups work with uh, Bill Gessner of CDS CC Consulting uh, to build these, or you might have someone internally who's working on yours. Um, but if you don't have them yet, we can help you understand why they're important and get you connected to people who can help you get them built. Our number is there on the screen as well as our email again, info at fci.coop. Feel free to contact us and we can talk through what they are, why they're important, and or get you connected to resources to get started on building yours. And it's really rarely too early to start learning about pro formas and how they work because they're going to be an important part of developing your project. But let's go forward assuming you have your pro forma financials. So how much owner capital, and this will be on your pro forma and your sources and uses budget, uh, will you, your startup need to raise? Now another quick thing is if you've gone to our website, we have a template, a sources and uses template. This is meant for co-ops that don't yet have a pro forma but will have an estimate about how big they think their store is going to be. That's about all you need to actually use this template that you can fill out to give you a basic sources and uses. So check that out on our website and you can uh, start there to start playing with this formula I'm going to teach you uh, to think about our ownership goal for your co-op. So, Something we know about raising owner capital, and that can be in the form of owner loans, 
uh, can be in the form of preferred shares, or these days in direct public offering is being done by a couple of startups. But any way you slice it, that is the piece that's considered the owner portion of capital uh, uh, in paying for the cost of building your store and your cooperative. On average, 20 to 25 percent of your owners will lend um, uh, or buy preferred shares. This comes from data from dozens and dozens of startups and mature co-ops all over the nation running these projects. We see again and again that owner participation always falls between 20 and 25 percent of our owners at a co-op. The average investment will be uh, $3,500 $3, to $5,000. That's kind of the range of the we see. And people will say, well, people in our community don't have a lot of money. It's going to be a lot of $1,000 loans. Well, it's all averaged together. So if you have one person doing a $20,000 loan and lots of $1,000, $2,000 loans, still your average might come in around $3,500. So this is all of those loans averaged together. Or maybe you have a couple $50,000 loans, um, so that average is taken up. Um, so these is all the loans blended together. We know on average they will invest $3,500 to $5,000 and 20 to 25% of your owners will invest. And again, we've seen this in very wealthy communities as well as, low, as uh, you know, more working class communities. This is the average nationally. So with a strong campaign manager and a plan, uh, the middle point between the two poles is a likely good goal. So we're gonna, we're gonna assume we're working with a co-op that needs to raise a million dollars uh, in owner capital, okay? So if they needed to, raise a million dollars and only 20% of their owners decided to participate in whatever offering they made, preferred shares or owner loan, and the average loan was at the low end, 3,500, they would need over 1,400 owners to fund the owner portion of the, of the sources and uses. Sounds kind of intimidating, right? Let's look at the best, let's look at the, uh, the, the best case scenario. Um, if they needed to raise a million dollars and 25% of their owners participated, and they participate at an average level of $5,000 uh, of loan, then we only need 800 owners to fund that million dollars. So with a strong campaign manager and plan, we, would, I, we are comfortable saying the midpoint between the two tends to be the good aiming point. Um, we do see some startups start at the low end of this. They'll say, well, let's go with the most optimistic. When we get to 800 owners, we'll get started and we'll keep trying to grow owners. And that's an okay way to look at it too, but remember that's gonna be a more uphill battle because you're gonna keep pulling in those new owners and or during such a great campaign that you're running at 25% participation and $5,000 per average loan. So we say kind of aim for the midpoint, realistically. So what I did here is we add together uh, the 1429, the most conservative number, and the most uh, optimistic number, 800, put them together, divide them by two, I came up with about 1,100 owners needed to run a successful owner loan or preferred shares campaign for a startup that needs to raise a million dollars. So you see what I did there? All right, so we're assuming so those million dollars. Let's, let's go to the next slide. So then, okay, we have this number in our head. We need to raise a million dollars, and we want to be make sure we can hit it. So we've done the math, and so we're going to that midpoint. We need 1,100 owners to launch our owner loan campaign. So how many owners to open your doors? This is not, uh, this is not scientific here. Um, there are no hard and fast rules, but remember, more owners, more success. We do not want to aim low, get our doors open, and not have enough people coming in. So something I recommend is take those owners you have to have to get started at, or to run your owner loan campaign or your owner preferred shares, and then have 800 owners to start owner loan uh, minimum then we're looking for 1,200 owners minimum when we get open. And don't panic when you hear that. That last 400 owners does happen faster and easier than the first 400. All right, so next slide. Okay, so we're just gonna look through some scenarios again with this first technique for thinking about what maybe your ultimate ownership goals are, okay? So if we need to raise that $1 million over here on the left, Again, we, we look, we need somewhere between 1,400 and 800 owners, depending on how well uh, the campaign goes, how many people participate and at what level. We're gonna go for that midpoint of 1,100 owners and 800 owners minimum to start the campaign, but 1,100 would be ideal. And then I said, well, let's, be, let's, let's try for 1,100 plus 50% more at open. So they need 1,100 owners to start their owner loan campaign and they need six, around 1,600 or 1,650 to open their doors. These are gonna be their targets. These are the big 
broad targets for where we need to be as we go farther along in the campaign and get close to opening our doors and at doors opening. Now, I'm going to look at the other end, one of the other examples they gave you, what if you only need to raise 500,000? Um, you're doing a smaller store, or there's more, um, maybe the build out's being paid for uh, by the, develop the developer you're working with, whatever your reason, let's just look at that. So um, most conservative scenario, they would need a little over 700 owners to do their owner capital campaign. And best case scenario, they would need 400 owners. So again, the midpoint between that most conservative and most optimistic is 550 owners to do their owner capital campaign. And then 50% more owners added on toward the end, to by the time we open, they're looking for about 825 owners by the time they get open. Now, there's some pros and cons to this technique, which we'll look at later. But remember, again, we're looking at what do we have to raise? And this will show up on your sources and uses budget. What money, and this is not the equity money that comes in share by share from your owners, but the actual owner uh, capital, which will be owner loans and or preferred shares or possibly through a direct public offering. But that line in your pro forma, how much you have to raise, raising that money is directly tied to how many owners you have. So it's a great starting point and then from there we can extrapolate about how many owners we need to successfully and abundantly open and make sure we have those customers in the door so our stores stay open and thrive. All right. So that was method number one. Let's look at method number two. Now you have your magic number, right? We just came up with it. If you have the sources and uses amount, then we do the math and we're good to go. Well, there's really no such thing as one magic number. I know that you guys would love to hear, and we'd love to say that there is, um, but that's just one way to look at the number. Let's look at it from another angle, about how we think about how many owners our particular co-op is going to need. So method number two is to look at the industry best practices. So let's dive into that. After a decade of supporting food co-ops and startups, membership patterns of success have emerged. Uh, for this method, you, do, you need to look at the market study's recommended size for your source. So if you have a market study, take a look at the size that was estimated in there for your store, uh, for your sales, and that would be the best way to start. Now, if you don't have that yet, um, you can look for co-ops that are in the open existing food co-ops that are in communities very similar in size and make up to yours. So if you're in a community of about 20,000 people and it's a college town with a small college looking for food co-ops in similar community, just to get an idea of what kind of size might be possible, you can call and ask us and talk to us to get some estimates of what we think might be possible in your community. There's a couple ways to go about it. Um, or if you have a size in mind already, you can start there and see where it goes and then adjust that number, maybe our goal number, once you have a market study that recommends a size. Okay, so the best, practice, the best practice view looks at the idea of a 6,000 square foot total store with 4,000 square feet of retail. That is the assumed baseline size for this best practice view. And here is just for fun a photo of People's Food Co-op in Kalamazoo, Michigan, which is actually this exact size. Um, so if you're ever interested, if you look them up on Google, um, there's actually a, it'll say, see inside. Um, when the Google information comes up on them, and you can click on that and actually take a virtual walk-in tour of the store. If you just want to get a feel for what size store that is. So that was a little just side information for fun. Um, so we know from historical data on startups of this size that their success or lack thereof, um, the following number of owners uh, for benchmarks are recommended. And this comes from us as well as Bill Gessner, but this is something that Bill says quite often, um, who works, does a lot of performer work with startups and has worked with startups for years as well uh, through CDSCC, that the end of organizing stage one, be your goal is to have 300 owners if you're going to have this size store. The end of stage 2A, that's your feasibility phase, where you're doing your market study, your pro forma, deciding, yes, this looks feasible, we can move forward, 500 owners is the goal. Then we have the owner capital campaign. We had been saying, a lot of, there, Bill had been saying 600 owners, we were just talking about this yesterday, and we're seeing more and more that, you know, 800 is ideal to really reach the goal, depending on how much you have to raise. But somewhere between six and 800 owners by the time you get to owner capital campaign and then opening at 1,000 owners. Now, this is very one-size-fits-all. We're going to try and stretch it and shape it a little bit and see how we can look at it. 
And I'm going to pause real quick and say, if you're having any questions that you want answered at the end of this webinar while we're talking through all this here, email us at info at fci.coop. And Mary Stennis Wilborn, our Outreach and Operations Coordinator, is collecting those questions for me, and it's going to pass them on to me at the end of the webinar. I'm going to make sure they all get answered. So again, if you're having any questions, I'd love to hear them. Info at fci.coop. All right. So we've got this standard size. Let's say your store is going to be a little bigger um, or a little smaller. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at a milestone uh, list for a 12,000 square foot store. So this is twice the size. As you know, notice, the numbers have pretty much doubled. Um, at the end of stage one organizing, we're looking at about 600 owners. But then you say 600 owners. Well, if somebody is opening a 12,000 square foot store, they're from a much larger community than the organization, than the co-op that is opening a 6,000 square foot store. So as the community is larger and the store is larger, we need to have more people to make each piece of the, each piece of the co-op project go. So at the end of stage two organizing, they would have 800, 2A feasibility, they would have 800 owners. And for owner capital campaign, they would need at least 1,000 owners probably to 1,200, depending on how much they have to raise. But remember, that's not the only factor. I know we walked through that in stage one is a way, and it's a great way to look at what you might need in the way of ownership. Because if you can't raise the money, you can't open your doors. But maybe they don't need as much money as you would think for a project that large. They're still going to need this higher number of owners. And then opening 1,500 owners or more would be ideal. And again, if we're looking at a smaller store, uh, end of stage one organizing, looking at about 200 owners, uh, and you'll see the numbers cascade down, and maybe about 750 owners by open. Okay, so quick what if. You've done the stage one analysis that is based on how much money you need to raise from owners from your sources and uses budget, and then you've looked at the best practices recommend recommended by size, and the numbers don't match. What if your stage one analysis and your type two analysis suggest you need different amounts of owners? The magic formula is to always aim for the bigger number. We don't say that to make your life tough. We say that because owners are magic. They are the magic sauce in your formula. The more owners you have, the more success you are very, very likely to have. So we're going to aim toward that higher number. OK. So one last thing on this setting owner, owner goals. The best magical recipe for success, again, go with the higher number. <laughs> um, and review your results uh, with each other, with your board, after using both of these formulas. And then review them with us, or if you're working with someone at CDSCC, but talk about, um, take a look at how you calculate the numbers, what your board thought of them, and then what you decide to go with and test it. We're always going to recommend that you test these ideas and decisions you make, not because you guys aren't brilliant organizers of your own food co-ops, because you are your own best resource in many ways on your community and your co-op's needs, but because it always helps to get an outside view with a lot of experience. So when you come up with those numbers, or you're not sure, or we came up with somewhere between 800 and 1,000 to get open, and we debated it because of this, again, email us, info at fci.coop to get uh, set up a time to talk or give us a call, and we'll talk those through with you. Or if you're working with anyone else, uh, any other experts in, from who work with Food Co-op Startups all time, run it past them. OK. So after, stage, after we figure out how many owners, our goal, remember I said there's four steps to great owners your growth. One is to know your goal and why. Now, the next piece is we need to put those numbers to work. We lay out a timeline because we, we don't just have the ownership goals of, okay, 800 to start on or loan and 1,200 to open. There are other milestones, ownership number milestones, or ownership numbers that can be tied to important milestones in your co-op's development that will help move it forward, both for you as organizers, and this would be number two, our number two technique here would be um, to make that internal timeline like maybe we want to get to 500 owners before we do the market study and 600 owners before we launch our site search committee. Um, we're going to, to take those big numbers we just came up with, which is how many owners to raise the money, how many owners to open, and we're going to start to break those apart and tie other numbers, other steps along the way to ownership growth numbers so we can get those things aligned and pull them together. 
Um, and then the third piece will actually be to turn that into that timeline into one that makes sense to your owners and is fun and exciting for them. So they see ownership growth as having everything to do with the growth of their of their co-op, right? And then in the end, planning. So that will be uh, a, for a future webinar on how to build that timeline now that you have the, the big goals. How do we build the smaller ownership goals and then how do we reach them? If you're impatient and want to have that conversation before those webinars get out, again, email us or call us. We'd be happy to talk with you about how you build those timelines. Okay, we are ready for the question answer uh, section of this, of, of this. And I saw a question pop up on the, oh, there it goes. Okay, so how does the need to do a market study earlier affect this? In our low income community area, an early study has been suggested. Okay. Great. So you're, if you're working with a very low-income community where you feel it is possible, now I want to define that. I work with a lot of startup communities that are um, say, well, we're not a college community or we're not a wealthy community, we're more of a working class community. Um, quite often those communities can still raise the same kind of owner equity um, or owner capital uh, that, than any other startup can. But if we're talking about a co-op that is truly in a low-income community, a low, I mean, low, low resource, low, low resource, low wealth community who might be actually looking to source some of that money that would usually raise from owners through grants, um, through other forms of bringing that wealth into the community. Um, so it's even, you're going to look at it a little different, right? Um, so, but still, you're going to have a pro forma saying how much of the money you're going to raise from your community, from your owners, versus um, from grants and so and of that things of that nature. So. Um, do I need to do my market study earlier? Um, it's kind of a question for a different webinar, but uh, there's no such thing as doing it too early, uh, a market study. A market study is a great way to find out if it's possible to open a food co-op in your community and what kind of size. And when you can be realistic about the size and tell people what it's capable of, you can grow their vision of the grocery store and excitement for it maybe faster. The, the caveat to that is that market studies go stale. Uh, once they're more than two years old, they're considered stale. If you get a new major competitor in your market, they're considered stale. I mean, there have been changes and adjustments to the market that make it no longer accurate. So if you purchase that market study, which is not a small amount of money, um, really early on, you're going to get great information. Um, it's going to help you create these owner goals, that pro forma, understand how much money you need to raise. And the sooner you understand that, the better in many ways, except for you may have to somewhere in your process pay for that market study again before you've actually gotten to the point that your project's funded and being built. So that's the caveat there. But would it help? Yes, absolutely. If you had an earlier market study to get a really clear picture of how much money you need to raise from your community, what size store you're going to have, and therefore accurate owner goals. But you don't need accurate owner goals to get started <laughs> as you're first starting to sell ownership shares. Um, a lot of co-ops don't have that information yet. They may be 100, 200 owners in. Before they have that information, 300 owners in, I can get to more precise goals. And that is okay. All right. So another question, of, <laughs> and I hear this one a lot, um, is, well, it's more kind of a version of, I'm going to ask you, it's more of a version of, but in our community, dot, dot, dot. Um, and what it is, is what I hear is, um, people trying to wiggle out of hitting those goals. I do know it's really difficult when you hear we need 1,200 owners. And people go, well, people just aren't too engaged in our community, or um, you know, people are really skeptical here. And you know, 200 dollars is you know, they're just not going to invest 200 dollars until we're open. Do we really have to hit those goals? Because they're going to say they say they're going to shop with us after we're open. Um, that would be lovely to believe and to find out to be true, but we have seen again and again it's not true. Um, and startups that have opened with a low number of owners and communities where they believed there was a lot of excitement for what they're doing, but people were just a little skeptical and didn't want to invest um, until the store is actually open and their ownership share, they have not seen that be the result. Ownership really is tied to be able to raise the money and get the people in the door. So some startups have had to go back and do another uh, ownership drive right after opening to scramble to get those sales up, uh, and sometimes that works, but it, it's definitely a risk factor. Really, in a lot of ways, developing and opening a food co-op is pretty much the work of growing ownership and investment in your vision. That's the center of your work. Um, so 
no, I can't, I can't, I can't give you an okay based on your unique student situation uh, on lower ownership goals necessarily. But if you want to talk through the details of your specific situation, uh, go ahead and call or email us. Membership versus ownership word. Is there a preferred one? Ah, so some people uh, call them members, some people call them owners, and some people call them member owners. So since you asked me, you're going to get my bias. Um, I think the owner word is, pre is preferred in a lot of cases because it actually describes what people are. They own the store. This is your store. You own it. You fund it. That ownership brings a lot of pride. But uh, membership was the preferred word for many decades in food co-ops. It started to shift, actually, when the popularity of things like Costco and Sam's Club came up because membership started to mean passive participation, the right to shop. Um, so some people moved over to owner, and we have some that have hybridized it, member, owner. Uh, only you can decide what really is going to play best in your community, uh, but I strongly recommend feeling out the word owner uh, instead of member. Um, I think it's much more empowering. All right. Okay, well, let's. Uh, I think that's the end of our questions for today. This is quick, short, and sweet, but it's important core stuff. And we can move on to timelining next time we get together and talk about how to take those goals you developed from there and build them into a timeline. Make sure you actually work through both possible ways of looking at your ownership goal numbers and then discuss the results as a board. And as a board or a steering committee, agree on set targets together. That said, your goals can evolve and change as, of course, your assumptions about the size of your store and your pro forma might change as the project moves forward. So we want to set goals and put that line in the sand, but it is sand and it can move. But make that decision together as a board and understand why you've made the decision about those goals. Today's slides will be available at Food Co-op Initiative, or are actually at foodcoopinitiative.coop slash slides if you'd like to get those and look at them more in depth or share them with someone else. Uh, this also will be, this whole webinar will be up on YouTube later today on a Food Co-op Initiative's YouTube page. We've got coming up by popular demand, uh, Owner Capital Campaigns 201 and 202. Both of these will be talking with Katie Novak, the Owner Loan Campaign Manager at Green Top Grocery in Bloomington, Illinois. This is a startup that just raised the highest amount ever by a food co-op, a startup of $1.3 million in owner loans. She already did a webinar with us that you can find on our website and on our YouTube page about that campaign, how they ran it, and why they were successful. But because of so much interest and so many calls to Katie about what they did to be so successful, she has graciously agreed to do a more in-depth, in nitty-gritty look uh, for people who are actually going to run campaigns. Not for boards who are talking about how to set them up, but if you're really going to be in there campaign managing, running that campaign, the nitty-gritty details of what she did to set them up for success, and she's actually breaking into two sessions. There's so much information. So 201 is coming up at the end of August, and then she'll be back in September with us. Thanks so much for coming uh, to our webinar today and participating. Again, if you ever have questions, our resources and our support are free. Give us an email at info at uh, fci.coop or give us a call. Thanks so much. Have a great day.